The customer is not always right, and many times the problem they experience is actually their fault. You must take care in responding to upset customers when they are wrong. Here are five strategies for tactfully handling a situation that was caused by the customer. Realize you cannot win an argument with a customer. Certainly, you can prove your point and even have the last word. You may be right, but as far as changing your customer's mind is concerned, you will probably be just as futile as if you were wrong. Your goal in complaint situations is to retain the customer, not to be right. If you win the argument, you may very well have lost the customer. The only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it. Never tell a customer they are wrong. You will be smart to never tell a customer they are wrong or mistaken. Telling a person they are wrong arouses opposition and will make the customer want to battle with you. Ever tell your spouse they are wrong? It is difficult under even the most peaceful conditions to change people's minds. So why make your job even harder by starting out on the wrong foot and flat out telling your customer she is wrong? If you know your customer is wrong, it is better to start off saying something like, I thought the contract read otherwise, but let's take a look. Begin in a friendly way. Remember, you catch more bees with honey. Avoid starting out on the defense or speaking with an authoritative tone as if you have to prove the customer wrong. Even when the customer is wrong, this is not an appropriate response. But getting in a friendly way means hearing the customer out, allowing venting time, and showing respect even when your final answer is no. It includes optioning and telling the customer what you can do, not simply what you can't do. Get a yes, yes response. This is an old tactic dating back to Socrates. When talking with your customer, begin by emphasizing the things on which you agree. Get the customer to say yes and keep them, if possible, from saying no. When a person says no, all of their pride demands that they remain consistent with themselves and it is very difficult for them to change their mind and agree with you because now all of their sense of pride is involved. The diplomatic communicator builds a psychological path toward an affirmative response by strategically getting their opponent, customer, to say yes a number of times. For example, years ago, when I was heading up consumer affairs for a car rental company, I had an escalated call from a very, very upset customer. The customer was demanding that the company pay him $3,000 and some change because of our mishap. Our mishap caused him to be three hours late to a meeting. He explained that he was a consultant and his billable rate was $1,000 per hour. I wish I had his job. The problem was our fault. There was no way around that. But the demand was unreasonable and I knew we weren't going to be able to give in. It just didn't make good business sense. So I used the yes, yes strategy on him and here's how it worked. Mr. Jones, you are an astute businessman, are you not? I knew he'd say yes as he boasted proudly that his clients paid him $1,000 per hour for his services. Next, I said, and as an astute businessman, I'm sure you only make decisions that make good business sense. Absolutely, he said. I knew I had him because I had built an affirmative path. So finally, I said, I am quite sure that if you were in my shoes talking to a customer in this situation that you would not simply give a customer $3,000 because they experienced an unfortunate delay. I literally held my breath because I wasn't sure how he'd respond. And after about three or four seconds, he said, Ms. Golden, you're right. If I were you, there's no way I'd give a customer $3,000 for waiting three hours. Wow, it was that easy and it will be that easy for you. I want you to try this. Build an affirmative path by asking your customer two simple and obvious questions that you know will result in a yes response. It's very much psychological. Your customer won't feel comfortable disagreeing with himself and he will feel compelled to say yes so that he does agree with himself. 
And finally, number five, avoid saying no. Instead of flat out telling the customer no, even when the problem is their fault and no is the only logical response, start off with a positive statement of what you are able to do. I can have a technician come out tomorrow to take a look at your lawn and see what we can do to get rid of those weeds for you. Try one, two, or all of these tactics when dealing with a problem that was caused by the customer. When you do, you'll be responding with diplomacy and tact. Explaining the situation will be easier and you'll significantly increase your chances of retaining your customers. Thank <laughs> you.